All right, Buenos dias, mis amigos. Today, I want to talk about Second Timothy chapter three, verse one. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. All right. So, first of all, let me state that you know in the last days perilous times is not about this idea of a man being born with a tattoo on his head it's never gonna happen it's not about turning on your television and and seeing you know on Fox News or CNN you know wars and you know explosions and action films and all that sort of stuff <laughs> that's not gonna happen you're not gonna know that we're in the last days by turning on your TV and seeing violence all right because that's already happening has nothing at all to do with what this is talking about in second Peter chapter 3 and I want to prove that to you I want to show it to you beyond any doubt whatsoever Okay, um, so let me start off just by reading this chapter and then drawing parallels or connecting dots with other scripture. Okay, so when we talk about the last days and perilous times, this is talking about the great tribulation that we're in right now now and there should be no mistake after this video should be no doubt that this is talking about the deception that is in the world today it is greater than it's ever been and it's unlike any other time in the history of the world the deception in this world is worse than anybody can even imagine and I believe that people aren't seeing it and if you don't see how deceptive the world is how much deception there is in the world today then your eyes are not open and so let's open your eyes all right let's open our eyes and read 2nd Timothy 3 starting verse 1 this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful unholy without natural affection truce breakers false accusers incontinent fierce despiser of those that are good now let's look at this word because uh, I am not sure. Incontinent. Incontinent. Having no or insufficient voluntary control over... Now that's... I don't think that's right. Hold on a second. I don't think that's about... It's close, but I don't think it's about... Surely that's not about... I don't even want to say what that's about or what that said. <laughs> there we go, that's better. This is not about not being able to control your bowel movements. Okay. Not restraining the passions or appetites, particularly the sexual appetite, indulging lust without restraint or in violation of law. Unchaste. Lewd unable to okay so <clears throat> that's also what this refers to but in the Bible it's talking about people who are not able to control themselves in a sexual way they're having sex with uh, men and women married unmarried um, old, young, 
people this is the world that we're living <coughs> in excuse me and that's what that means okay traders heady high-minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God uh, that's what that's the world that we're in right now having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away and I'm telling you the church is full of these people in my experience of walking into churches people the pastor won't talk to me and despises me because I believe the Bible is perfect from beginning to end without flaw and the the preachers they don't like it and that's a problem I mean that's a big red flag you're a preacher and you don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands that's a big big problem all right and I've told this story many times the last time that I went to church the pastor held up the collection plate and emphatically proclaimed this is Jesus demanding people give him their money that was the last time right, yeah, that's a problem man that's not all oh, he just had an off day no that's his heart was revealed on that day and this is not just small town Kellogg this is happening everywhere all right preachers they go to Bible college as a snot-nosed little kid a 19 year old snot-nosed little brat thinking hey this is an easy way to make money they don't it has nothing at all to do with the truth in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ it's all about a job and making money and uh, a lot of them are old now but this thing that just tells you this has been going on for an awful long time way too long anyways for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with diverse lust ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth now we see this all the time people are you know oh have you read this extra biblical book you know have you heard of um, you know like uh, what do they call that uh, CERN you know and you hear about uh, people talking about the occult you know and you hear people talking about uh, you know hand signs and all that sort of stuff and uh, mysticism and they're they they could tell you they could talk to you about that all day long but when it comes to the Bible well, I don't know you know I don't even think uh, those people know the basics of the Bible uh, and a lot of them uh, you know they claim to be uh, you know like a Hebrew roots kind of guy I mean you see this all the time all the time people learning anything and everything except what is written in the Bible and what they when they do read the Bible they don't believe it's from God this is the world that we're living in today people will sit there on TikTok and learning all the things of the world ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth and Jesus is the truth and the Bible is the Word of God and Jesus is the Word of God in heaven the Bible is the Word of God on earth now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses so do these also resist the truth Men of corrupt minds reparate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be made manifest unto all men, as their as theirs was also or also was. Excuse me. I'm 
but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and at Iconium, at Lystra, what, oh, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. <clears throat> now think about that. <laughs> Are you in Christ Jesus now? Then how can you make the claim that there's a great tribulation coming in the future? It's already here. So we read in <clears throat> Matthew 24 about how there a great there will soon you know there will be great tribulation. Hey, let me read it be before I screw up the verse. Obviously, I need some more coffee, huh? Stumbling my words too much. Okay, so in verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be and except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened and then of course immediately after the tribulation what tribulation well you've heard people talk about Jacob's trouble and uh, you know this great tribulation and some people even call it a seven year tribulation and that's not in the Bible anywhere at all if you're a Christian right now is as bad as it gets and if you're not able to discern all the deception that is out there that means you don't know the truth and so that's what I want to do. I want to show you the truth. So if you could see the truth, you could see how much deception is out there in the world today. It's incredible. And that's the persecution. That's the, tr the time of trouble. And that is the perilous times that we are in. And the Bible's very clear about that. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived now think about this Jesus is asked specifically what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and the very first thing Jesus says is take heed that no man deceive you that's not enough for you okay the very next thing he says for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ saying I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many I'll tell you how bad it is there are some people that claim this is not I Jesus am Christ this is people coming and saying that they are Christ and shall deceive many and that's never that's that doesn't happen and if that did happen once or twice, <laughs> Jesus wouldn't care enough to warn us about it. No, this is about people saying that Jesus is the Christ and deceiving many. Only a deceiver would claim this is not Jesus. All right, only a deceiver would say there are going to be many people that come claiming that they are Christ and deceive many. Only a deceiver would make that claim. Jesus is clearly saying, For many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. All right, the wars and rumors of wars, what you see on CNN and Fox TV or Fox News, whatever. Yeah, that's not that's not the, the sign of the end all right all these things must come to pass be not troubled that's not why uh, God is going to shorten the days okay that's not why not because of wars 
but because of deception. The Bible's very clear on that. Those things, the wars, they're just the beginnings of sorrows. I think about this. Many false prophets, false teachers, that's all that means, false teachers, people teaching falsely. False prophets and false teachers are the same thing. The very same thing. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And then here's another verse that people will blatantly lie about. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. See, you don't even, what they say is you don't even need Jesus. You just have to endure to the end. And, and then they'll say, well, if you can refrain from sinning until the end, you'll be saved. I mean, that's the same thing, saying you don't need Jesus to be saved. Just refrain. <laughs> I mean, that's an impossible task. To refrain from sinning until the end of the world. It's impossible. The whole reason why you come and call upon the name of the Lord is because you know you're not perfect. Because you know you can't do it yourself. Because you know you need help. Because you know you're a sinner that needs saved. And Jesus is there to save us. All right, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. All right, so right now the gospel of the kingdom is preached in all the world. So hold on, the end could come any time. It could be today, it could be 50 years from now. Nobody knows. All right, so back to Second Timothy 3. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, and knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now think about this. All scripture, the whole Bible, is given by inspiration of God is given by the Spirit of God and Jesus is God Jesus is the Spirit of God and God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All right, now think about that. <clears throat> you cannot have an ESV, NIV, NASB, and claim that that's a perfect Bible. And if it's not perfect, then it's not in the spirit of God. And you're not worshiping God, you're worshiping man because you're relying on man to tell you what God says. Just like Genesis 3, when serpent gets when the serpent gets Eve to doubt the word of God. Yea, has God said? Now if you're if you're uh, relying on a concordance to tell you what God says, it's like relying on the serpent to tell you what God says. All right, and that's a problem because you're not trusting God. You're not trusting the spirit of truth. You're not trusting Jesus. You're trusting man. 
Why would you do that? Why? You don't trust God? You, you believe God can resurrect you from the dead and give you everlasting life. But God can't give you a perfect Bible that you can hold in your hands and read and believe that these are the words directly from God? And that doesn't make any sense, man. Especially considering two things. One, nobody speaks the original language, so there is no original language to rely upon. And the and what Moses do with the originals the very first time that he got scripture from God he smashed them didn't he so the word of God endures forever and the word of God is from God it's not from man it's not from a stone on earth it's from God in heaven and I think that's important I mean really important because without that foundation you're left to make up whatever you want the Bible to say and that's why we're in the world that we're in right now with all the deception Psalm 12 the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of earth purified seven times Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. You cannot have a corrupt Bible and say this is pure. A pure BS. It's not pure word of God. It's not pure. It's not the perfect, pure Word of God. If you have a corrupt Bible, that's why it's so important to have a Bible that you fully believe are the true words of God because I'm telling you, in the end, it's going to play out exactly as your King James Bible says. All right, and I, you know, I guess since I'm on the subject, let's give you one example. go to this verse. I mean, there's so many examples I could give. But let's go to John chapter 7 verse 8. No, 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 no. Hold on a second. Let's do it this way. Give you one example of how corrupt these Bible versions are. Alright, so John chapter 7 verse 8. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. Jesus is telling them, go, go up to the feast. I'm, I can't go right now. I don't go up there yet. Implying that he's going to go up there, but just not right at this moment. Go ye up unto the, this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast. And, and of course we read that he does go up to the feast. Clearly, obviously. NIV. You go to the festival. I am not going up to this festival because my time has not yet fully come. I am not going up to this festival. And then of course we read that he does go up to the festival. Don't we? Thereby, the NIV makes Jesus Christ out to be a liar. Well, you think that's no big deal? Well, there's something wrong with your heart if you don't think that's a big deal. Eh, Jesus lied, so what? No, that's a huge deal. Jesus never lies. He never sins, not a single time. All right, so it's a big deal. It's a huge deal. All right, so we're in perilous times right now. We hear about the Great Tribulation. Let's go to uh, Mark 13. See what Mark 13 says. Just curious here. Does it talk about a tribulation? I see. 
But woe to them that are trying to walk. We have those. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And except the Lord shall be short, uh, except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh shall be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom He has chosen, He has shortened the days. All right. So, but in those days after that tribulation, all right. So, at the end of the, this tribulation is the end of the world. All right. And again, I want to tell you there is no seven-year tribulation coming after the rapture which is when we are lifted up in the air when the angels gather together the elect there is no seven year tribulation coming after that I mean just like the NIV makes Jesus out to be a liar so do these people that say there's a seven year tribulation coming after the rapture and the, because Jesus is very clear the Bible is clear all throughout the Bible clear and consistent all throughout the Bible that things are getting worse and worse and worse and then the end comes and when it's the end it's the end you see all these fools making it out to, as though the end is not the end but at the beginning of a thousand year period that's not true at all that, that would just means the end is not the end and then, of course, at the end of the world is when we are lifted up and we are changed, transformed into our glorified body, and our enemy is gathered at our feet and destroyed forever. And then comes, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Now, you can't have, you know, a thousand year period after that. You can't have a seven year tribulation after that. And when it's the end, man, it's the end. And too many people are teaching dispensations, just exactly as the Mormons do. And sometimes I wonder, has Mormonism taken over the world? Why, are, why, are, why is everybody teaching the doctrines of Mormonism? It's incredible. <laughs> and... I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know. Is it a sign from God that when I first became a believer, all these Mormons came to me? And they were knocking on my door, coming to my house, calling me on the phone, meeting with me down at the park, talking to me, and telling me this is what we believe. And then they couldn't answer my questions. But I learned enough from them to know that they don't believe in the Bible. And they believe in dispensations. That no, well, Jesus came along because there was a necessity to, uh, to preach the truth. But then the truth got lost. And here comes Joe Smith to preach us, to uh, you know, build back up the church and to preach the, the truth that uh, Jesus, you know, whatever Jesus taught it wasn't it just it ran out of fuel and so we needed another savior and that's Joe Smith all right and so <clears throat> and they I mean I'm, and they're what they do is they preach this dispensation dispensationalism from one point to another point from you know from Noah to Abraham to Moses or whatever you know from Adam to Noah to Abraham to Mo you know however you want to break it up to Moses to eventually to Jesus and however you want to break it up that that's how but that's what they do they pretend like these are dispensations and that Joseph Smith is the latest dispensation and then, uh, of course, they teach that everybody gets resurrected. And everybody gets a second chance. Some people get resurrected as a Mormon, which is the, you know, the, you, that's where you become 
Jesus of your own planet and others get resurrected into just a lowly Christian where um, it's higher than than the atheist but I don't know what it is you you get to have sex with the Mormons or something I don't know what that means but and then the third state is that if you don't believe at all you come back as a black person you're cursed for your entire life that's what they teach that's the dispensations and that's the evolutionary process of eternal life and it doesn't so it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter what you believe you have eternal life and those guys are it's easy to, to dismiss them but when you see that out, you, people that appear to be Christian and appear to be non-Mormon teaching Mormon doctrine regarding the end time it makes you wonder you know I, and I look at I've looked at Christians and think man, are you a Catholic or a Christian because they pretend to be a Christian but they're teaching Catholic things it's crazy now let me see if I can find uh, there's one verse here that the Mormons hate this verse man and they stumble and they fumble they can't explain it Galatians 1 verse 8 but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that which we have I'm sorry if let me start over but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed and see in my experience you can't help a Mormon at all you can't convince them of anything you can't show them the truth and they and that they might be able to see because they don't care about the truth they're cursed so we have to let them be accursed there's nothing at all we can and I've tried oh, I spent hours and hours and hours talking to these guys lots of different groups I've had them sitting in my living room doesn't matter you can't say anything that'll click in their heads they're cursed they're cursed and there's nothing we can do to help them okay but this is what they teach they teach dispensationalism they teach this idea that there is a seven-year tribulation coming after the end of the world it's nonsensical but they're blind and so they don't see what they're saying and I'm telling you when it's the end of the world it's the end of the world all right, there's not a beginning thousand years there's not a beginning seven year tribulation there's not a seven year tribulation and then a thousand years if there were if either if there was either one of them then it wouldn't be the end of the world and so in second Timothy chapter 3 it says this know also that in the last days perilous time shall come perilous times and it's not just because of people are proud people are you know lustful and having gay sex and false accusers and all that sort of stuff I mean that's the result of uh, the deception that's in the world people you know you think about you all these little children they're going to school they're not learning the Bible and what they're learning are things contrary to the Bible and so it's almost it's got to be like a miracle for any child to go through the public school system and then to come out of it a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ because everything taught in the public school system is contrary to the Word of God now in school the little children are taught that God that uh, man is made in the image of a monkey and then that same little child picks up the Bible and it says let us make man in our image it says God said let us make man in our image so 
if both are true, then God is a monkey. You see, I mean, if this is you should, cannot take this lightly. These guys are mocking God. Let's see if I can. No, all right. Here, I'm gonna have to do it this way. Oh, uh, I don't know what. What am I doing here? I'm not sure what I'm doing. All right, so. And Jude, for example, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. That's the world we're living in. People, um, they don't know it because they're blind. But they're mocking God. You think that these people that mock God know the truth? No, they don't at all. Do you think the people that are mocking God know what they're saying? No, they don't. They mock God unconsciously, but willingly. Be okay. It's not even necessarily their own idea. It's an idea that they heard and then they repeat because they're blind. They don't see what they're saying. But that's what they're doing, and that's the way the the world has designed itself naturally, because of the absence and resistance of God. So they don't want to teach the truth, and so they pick an alternative that is something they think is acceptable even though it's not true and so that's how we come up with all these the variety of religions all the variety of uh, world beliefs world views anything and everything that is not the truth is what the world teaches but the Bible teaches the truth you think about Straight and narrow is the way. Was that Matthew 7? Narrow is the way that leads to everlasting life. And few there be that find it. Alright, so the, the truth <clears throat> is very narrow. Excuse me. <clears throat> but the world teaches a whole bunch of different ways, doesn't it? Okay. So... Let me look at another verse here. What was that verse I was looking for here? Who kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Okay, that's not what I was after. Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. I love uh, all these epistles of John, but this one in particular, this should slam the door shut of any idea that there's coming an Antichrist after the rapture. Because John expressly says there are Antichrists right now. When he's talking about the Antichrist, you, you've heard that the Antichrist will come. Well, this is in reference to the fourth beast of Daniel. Make no mistake about that. I mean, this is very simple stuff. And when we hear um, Paul talk about um, who shall exalt, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is worshipped or that is called God, or something or another he says something who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God this is in reference to the Antichrist which is the fourth beast of Daniel which is the beast of Revelation this is simple stuff man and if you don't get that man you've been listening to too many people and not trusting the Word of God but it's really that simple. 
all these verses about the Antichrist. Jesus talks about the Antichrist. You know, and when he talks about the Antichrist, he's talking about the fourth beast of Daniel and the beast of Revelation. Alright, so we'll just go to, I guess, Matthew 24 here. False Christ, the same thing as Antichrist. Same, same thing. There's no difference. There's not, well, there's the Antichrist over here, and then there's false Christ over there. No. Yeah, all you have to do is connect the dots. All right. Now, I know, liar, I get it, liars and deceivers, they come out, yeah. And they say, oh, that's different. You know, Jesus Christ will return 25 different times. And there's 72 ends of the worlds. And then there's a seven-year tribulation. Then a thousand years of peace. And then for un some ungod known, unknown reason, at the end of a thousand years of peace, God's going to just kill everybody. <laughs> wow. And you think of the movie The Left Behind. All of a sudden, people will just disappear and what's going on, Frank? Well, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Where'd George go? Well, it just you, that movie, just the idea of that movie, Kirk Cameron and his buddies, they all make Jesus Christ out to be a liar. You go back, you remember what I read the very first, know this, that in the last days perilous times shall come and one of the most popular movies in Hollywood is a movie called Left Behind and they've got number and they keep making them every couple of years because it's so popular. People love it. People love the idea, oh wow, you know, people are raptured away and then we all get one more chance to be saved. So you don't have to believe in Jesus now. You can wait until after. You can wait until we're in this mystery zombie-like world where we, then we can believe. And we can, you know, dodge the zombies and believe in Jesus and still be saved after the end of the world. It's fascinating, man. Yeah, I, I get it. It's cool. But it's not true at all. It's cruel. It's wicked to even teach that. Because when it's the end of the world, it's the end of the world. Alright, so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, all the tribes of the earth shall mourn. There's not going to be any doubt of what's happening. It's not going to be, oh, Where'd Margaret go? Where's Bobby? Oh, where's little Bobby at? No. It's not going to be mysterious. It's going to be without a doubt. I mean, everybody is going to know. And there's going to be no mistaking what's going on. In so much that people will be having heart attacks freaking out big time because of what's happening you're not going to be sleeping and wake up and people have disappeared there's going to be absolutely no doubt so we live in a world where very mainstream preachers are teaching this idea that there is a time after the rapture in which people will still be getting saved and that's not true at all there's no seven year tribulation after the end of the world there's no thousand years of peace and then God comes and destroys everybody or whatever they're teaching that's not in the Bible it's like everything that these mainstream teachers teach is false and those that teach the truth, nobody listens to because it's boring. It's not consistent with Hollywood movies. It's not consistent with CNN and Fox News. It's not consistent with that. So they don't care about that. They want Hollywood. You know, just like, um, you know, when, when Pontius, Pilate, he says... Hey, um, 
You want your king or whatever? What's he say there? I can't remember now. Something about something. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are we at here? Doggone it. Wow. I went. Let's do it this way for dog shakes. Um, yeah, here, John 19. Alright, so, uh, so he's got, he, Pilate's got, uh, he's got Barabbas, and he's got Jesus. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold, your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. And that's still true today. But think about that. People don't want the truth. They want Hollywood. Right? They don't want the truth. Jesus is the truth. They don't want him. They want the ruler of the world. Alright, okay, so I'm going to finish on one last note here in John. 1 John chapter 2, I believe. Was I here earlier? I don't know. Right there it is. Um, this is not what I was after, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, this is it right here. Right before here. Okay, so love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Right, now, I love it because... Boom. Because... This demonstrates that the world... This world is wicked. Yet, I, mean, I don't know how anybody doesn't see it. I really don't, but... I, you know, if you're blind, you're not going to see it. That's just the way it is. But it's obvious. This world is full of wickedness. And it's coming to an end. And a large part of the wickedness of this world is the lust of men and women. And you see it all the time. Uh, you know, dirty movies on TV. You know, it seems like you can't watch a movie without a dirty scene. Or, you know, dirty language, dirty speech. And it's filled with, you can't, it's hard to watch a good movie anymore because there's so much lust injected into every movie. It's disgusting. It's natural. I get it. People, people are attracted to it. So that's why they use it. But it's disgusting. And that is not going to follow us into the life hereafter. Neither is any of the wickedness that we see, that we read here in 2 Timothy 3. The covetousness and the boasters and the proud and the blasphemers and the disobedient, unthankful and unholy. All the, the false accusers. This world is just full of all kinds of wickedness. The incontinent. Alright. All that stuff does not follow us into the life hereafter. It's all coming to an end. All right, and it's coming to an end when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It doesn't matter how many Hollywood movies you make. That's not going to change. It doesn't matter what CNN Fox News says. It's not going to change. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. That's not going to change. And when he does come, that's it. It's the end of the world. I mean, you should have known when Jesus said it's the end of the world, it's the end of the world. And after that, there are no more 
opportunities for men to be saved. It's over. The game is up. You had your chance, and your chance is right now. And I'm telling you, Jesus could come tonight. He could come here in a few minutes, and why have you put off believing in him? What, you're um, so important to you that your extra biblical books, that because of pride, you think, oh, I got extra knowledge because I got these extra scriptures. What are you holding on to? Seriously. What are you holding on to? Why aren't you trusting fully? Because when you're when it comes down to it, who's going to save you? You have no control over your life. Whether you're on your deathbed or whether Jesus is in the clouds of heaven and it's the time is up. All the all everything that we believe is gonna be foolishness on that day, in that moment. It's not gonna matter. And we're gonna find out in the end that it was never our it was never ours to choose. It was never our choice to be saved. It was never something now that we decided. We never said, oh, I'm going to be saved now. No. No. You're wrong. You didn't choose to be saved. It wasn't your choice to make. It was never your choice to make. So what are you holding on to? Right? What are you holding on to? Why are these false doctrines, false teachers so important to you? Why is it so important for you to take an English word and to translate it into Chinese and then retranslate it back into the English? Why is it so important to you to fool people with that sort of thing? Why don't you just believe the Bible you hold in your hands? You ever think about that? Why is it so important to you? Why are all these complexities in life so important to you? Why not just believe the simple truth? Why not just believe the Bible you hold in your hands? You think about John chapter 15 verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Jesus is the one that chooses us. At the end of the day, at the end of the world, when, it, when it's all over, and Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we're going to know it was never our choice. It was never anything that we did. Nothing we ever said. Nothing we ever thought. That made it possible that we are saved. It's always been his choice to make. Of course. Of course. You have to believe. You have to want. But that doesn't matter. At the end of the day... You can believe in one hand and hope in the other hand and see which one fills up faster. It doesn't matter until Jesus chooses you. Alright, okay, that's enough.